So good evening everyone. Um, thank you for coming out on this lovely night. We've got an action-packed evening planned. Tonight we're here to honor this beautiful big old Himalayan cedar. Uh, this cedar, the city has given permission for this uh, tree to be taken down. And it's been taken down to allow for a downtown revitalization project. And it's a project that needs to be done. We do agree that we need, definitely need revitalization here. However, we're extremely disappointed as Poco Heritage Trees and as our um, just community folks, we're extremely disappointed that once again, trees were not considered. There was no thought given to retaining the big trees in the face of development. So tonight you're going to hear from some really knowledgeable and passionate community members who understand how important these big trees are. So these trees, of course, give a shade, they cool the um, hot pavement, they um, provide oxygen for us to breathe, and they take up carbon dioxide. They also soak up water, and they're good for storm water management. They um, are an important habitat, habitat for urban wildlife. They're good for our mental health, and they're even good for business. So they play a lot of roles, and we're gonna have some really great speakers here tonight uh, to tell you a little bit more about some of those issues. And then we have some awesome musicians and some musical entertainment, and then we'll have a visit by a very special guest, and you might spot that special guest already. Anyways, um, I would like to also acknowledge that we are on the unceded um, Coast Salish territory. We're uninvited guests here, and I'd like to turn it over to Priscilla Omulo to give an opening and a land acknowledgement for us. Okay, thank you. It's night, uh, which is uh, good evening in Um As Nancy mentioned, my name is Priscilla Mulo. I'm from Sartlip First Nation. I've been a visitor here on Coquitlam Territory for almost the past 10 years. And as a First Nations person, I came to, to honor this event and stand with you um, in our respect for trees, our respect for land. You know, I would really like for us to take a moment and recognize that uh, that trees are life and that we are all connected to the world in a way that sometimes I think that we forget. And so to recognize that, you know, this tree has a history, this tree has a life, that this tree has an essence that contributes to our community as well. And uh, so I really like to thank the organizers for bringing this together and everyone here for being here this evening. I'd like to thank the Creator for giving us these trees that help us survive and be here today. And uh, I'd like for everyone to stay safe and uh, have a, a really good evening that fills your soul as well as uh, has us standing here together. So, hi, Chikasiya. So, thank you very much, Priscilla, for that. Um, we're going to move right into some music here. We have Bill Marshall, Kate Smith, and Mary Marika. So I'm sorry. <laughs> um, so we are going to move right into some music now, and we'll turn it over to you. Thank you. Paradise put up a parking lot With a pink hotel, a boutique, and a swing and hot spot Don't it always seem to go That you don't know what you got till it's gone Hey, paradise put up a parking lot They took all the trees and put them in a tree museum The people a dollar and a half just to see them. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? The gay 
paradise, but of a parking lot. Farmer, farmer, put away the DDT now. Give me spots on my apples, but give me the birds and the bees now. Don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone? Hey, paradise, put them apart and gone. the screen door slam and a big yellow taxi took away my old man don't it always seem to go that you don't know what you got till it's gone to pay paradise put up a parking lot yeah they pay paradise put up a parking lot yeah they pay paradise put up a parking lot recognize the name of that song? Big Yellow Taxi. Big Yellow Taxi, Joni Mitchell. They paved paradise and put up a parking lot. They've already done that once here. Our next song is called Singing for Our Trees.
Kate. Um, that was lovely. Um, I'd like to now ask Christina Gower to come up and talk a little bit to us about trees and mental health. Hi folks. Great to see everybody here. So I looked at this and I, I have to admit I didn't have a ton of time to prepare but it actually doesn't take that much for me to prepare for this. Um, trees are very dear to my heart, uh, as are the forests and the waters and um, all the great things that we actually identify beautiful British Columbia with. Um, it's kind of two parts what I came up with that are both multi-layered and uh, bear with me uh, while I go through them. One of the first things that came to my mind was uh, that famous interview question. If you were a tree, what kind of tree would you be and why? Have we all heard that? So I actually keyed that into my Google and had a look at some of the answers and wow. Respect, sustenance, strength, shelter, thrives in a harsh environment, blooms and blossoms, attuned to surroundings, resilient, soaks up the floodwaters like Nancy said, makes us safe, Trees are a community, all on their own. That's what I want to be. Fragrant blooms and blossoms, weather the storms. Rings of history pass, yet here I stand steadfast. Seasonal change, but consistent. I read through some of those and then I came across this poem and it's long, so I'll try me fast. This is by Aman Mishra. A banyan tree, it's not a cedar, but this is amazing. So I could live for years, and with each year growing sturdy, benevolent and wise, so I could let people sit under my shade, have the important decisions for the village when the times are hard. I would observe banyas, or merchants, doing their frequent business, and from there I'll get my name. I would eavesdrop the conversations people do, and probably whiff in the air, pity their ignorance for brooding over small things that do not matter in life. I would watch the snake charmers show and snake billowing like a sea wave on the tunes of people clamoring with joy. I would hear captivating stories by storytellers who sit under me in the nights in front of people and gawk at their expressions. I would let reckless kids giggle around, climb, swing, fall, bruise their knees, cry, go home and come back the next day. I would witness people worshiping me and call me the symbol of immortality, call me the soul who never dies, who is always there and always will be. I would be tied with pious threats seven times around my trunk by women for the protection of their husband's life. I would watch men heading towards the fields while women do their daily chores, cooking the meal, taking it on the fields, feeding them, while the oldies snoring in the afternoons under the shack. I would stand strong in stubborn storms, watch past me the life-threatening drought the floods that diminish the proud of the village from one season to another and to another. I would rescue people from scorching sun at noon, from the light drizzle at dusk, pacify their looking up to the sky worrying look. I would fall asleep to the sound of people's rush, leaves rustling in the light breeze under the milky light scattered by the moon piercing the gray clouds. I would feel the cold nights all alone and disappear in the fog with only crickets chirping behind the tall grass or the sound of nocturnal bats flapping their wings in search of food, breaking the silence of the still night. Did that give you some imagery? Can you picture that, what it must be like to be a tree? We all know one of the major things uh, we do to help calm people with their mental illness is provide them with something called imagery or visualization, where we have people lie down, they use their senses, they close their eyes, and I challenge you to think of any time anybody would do that without mentioning hearing the breeze come through the leaves. There are, there are growing studies around the world that are coming to the same conclusion we all have here, anecdotally. It's a universal experience. We understand 
how that feels, how important it is to have a tree, to have a forest, to connect with the earth for our mental well-being. But we need science. Japanese studies show when people are compared to uh, urban environment versus being around trees and forests, it produces less anxiety, hostility, fatigue, confusion, and depressive symptoms. But it does result in more significant, um, sorry, vigor and greater sense of personal restoration. I'm not sure if anything's lost in trust, translation there. Poland uh, also conducted studies with the same result. There's a link between the benefits of living near trees and the immune system. And there's also multiple studies that show the immune system is deeply connected to our mental well-being and mental illness. With the comparison of urban and forested environments shows improvements physically as well. Your blood pressure, your stress hormones, everything goes down, their heart rate, the sympathetic nervous system activity, which causes stress, goes down. The paras parasympathetic nervous system, which decreases stress, goes up when you live in a forested environment. On a serious note, this is about for more than a tree. We have a climate crisis that needs us to preserve every good thing we have and then add to that. One of the new, there's a couple new terms in mental health, climate grief and climate anxiety. About a year ago, I had uh, my first young person come to me in the ER and say, I want to end my life because I want to reduce my carbon footprint. Since then, about three more, maybe. That's just my experience. There's a lot more of us that work in the ER. So remember that this tree symbolizes our survival in every way. Thanks for coming. Thank you so much, Christina. You've given us lots to think about. Um, I'd like to now invite Christina Saremba or John Saramba, up to come and talk to us a little bit about trees and wildlife habitat. Hello everyone, it's a real pleasure to be here. When I started thinking about what I was going to say this evening, I realized that it's really ironic that here we stand under these beautiful trees and at the same time the federal government is promoting the value of this type of resource as green infrastructure. They've come to realize the value of things like trees and the service they provide to us all. What's really unfortunate and ironic is that municipalities have yet to catch up to that. Even though there's funding available to use resources like this, that hasn't been taken advantage of. The other thing that I found interesting, I, uh, I'm not sure if you realize a little bit of history about this tree. This tree represents multiculturalism in addition to wildlife. These trees originated from the Himalayas. They can grow up to 250 feet tall and be as old as a thousand years. And the name of the tree translated into English is Timber of the Gods. What's also ironic is this tree has got tremendous medicinal values. And people in, Pac and it's the National Tree of Pakistan. People in the East actually sit under this tree if they have as asthma or respiratory problems. And ladies, some of the first perfume that was ever manufactured came from the oil from this very type of tree. I just want to talk briefly about the ecological benefits to wildlife. Trees, as you might well know, are an essential part of our landscape. Without them, we're simply a desert. They create local ecosystems for animals, insects, particularly pollinators, and for human health. They add greatly to our biodiversity. As I look around here, 
I look at all these trees here and they form a wonderful example of one of the unknown values or unrealized values is they simply form a travel corridor. It makes it much easier for pollinators and small mammals and birds to connect with the natural green spaces we have around us to our downtown area. If we want to keep those animals here, we want to ensure that we maintain those corridors. What we're doing instead, unfortunately, is we're taking out these beautiful big trees and we're replacing them with ornamental columnar trees that take away the shade, they take away the cooling effect, they take away the actual value to businesses. Christine talked about studies. Well, studies have now shown that trees add to the value of property owners, businesses. People are more likely to walk in the downtown core and to shop because of trees. Trees like this provide shelter for a wide variety of animals. Uh, I can imagine in this tree that you would see small birds called bush tits, warblers, woodpeckers, and each one of those are providing a service to us. The other thing that these trees provide, one of the little known facts is that of the 16 species of bats that we have in British Columbia, more than half live in trees. They don't live in buildings. They rely on trees like this, large trees. And as we lose our trees, we lose our insects, we lose our birds, we lose our bats. The other thing that this provides is it also has a direct influence on growing conditions around them. One, one only has to stand under this tree to realize the shade it provide, provides, the environment for microorganisms, and the reduction in wind. So in terms of small mammals and birds relying on this for their very survival, that's the importance of these trees. It's more than just people, it's about our culture. It speaks to our culture, what we're doing when we take down trees like this. Oh sure, you can replace a tree, and I hear of two to one replacement or one to one, but how can you replace something like this? How many years will it take to grow and to produce? So in closing, I just want to say that wildlife and people derive a large amount of benefits from trees, and all too often, we simply take them too much for granted. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, John. I always say I learn something every time John speaks, so again tonight, learn something. Um, so I'm going to turn it back over to Bill and Kate and Mary Ike again. Thank you. This next song is, the original song is called Bonnie Portmore, uh, a very old uh, traditional Irish tune about the cutting down of oak forests in Ireland for shipbuilding. And we have altered the lyrics just a little bit to reflect this situation here with our Diodor Cedar. And so we call this song Bonnie Diodor rather than Bonnie Portmore. And Marilka uh, will be playing uh, recorder uh, a little way through this piece. Oh, Bonnie Diodor, I am sorry to see such a woeful destruction of your ornament tree. You have stood on this site for many a long day, till the contractor's trucks come and haul you away. Oh,
You get to do a bit of work with this song. We know that probably you're not comfortable singing, wearing masks, and in fairly close quarters, but we would love you to clap along with the chorus of this song. I think that follows uh, COVID protocol to clap. And there are actions. So if you would like to do some actions to this song that would be just great i think you'll catch on pretty quickly this is another irish song it's called the ratlin bog and it tells a story of a tree down in the valley oh in that bog there was a tree a rare tree a rattling tree tree in the bog and the bog down in Nest, 
just on the twig and the twig on the branch and the branch on the tree and the tree in the bog and the bog down in the valley oh hi ho the rattling bog the bog down in the valley oh hi ho the rattling bog the bog down in the valley oh in that nest there was an egg a rare egg, a rattling egg. Egg in the nest, and the nest on the twig, and the twig on the branch, and the branch on the tree, and the tree in the bog. And the bog down in the valley, oh, hi ho, the rattling bog, the bog down in the valley, oh, hi ho, the rattling Bob, the ball down in the valley. Oh. So thank you so much. First you make us cry and then you make us laugh. I think music and trees and all the emotions that are wrapped up together there, um, it's, it's amazing. I would like to now ask Sandy Lemonnier to come up and tell us what trees mean to her. Thanks for coming. And when I was asked to speak, I, all I could think of was that I'm great, so grateful for trees. And uh, I, I'm part of this uh, tree group from all different walks of life. And uh, we all make this uh, motley crew of... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I have to say I'm so fortunate because I live on property with a lot of trees and in a whole dis and my whole areas of trees. And I can tell you when I'm gone to uh, the bigger city and come back, I have to say that the air quality is so much fresher and the smells <laughs> of the trees, I'm just loving it and I'm, I've benefited from that so much. They just, I feel like they just gifted me with this. And I, and I have to say I enjoy sitting on my deck and listening to the birds and and all the animals scuttering around and up and down the trees. And I think that's um, a big part of what we enjoy about trees. And I definitely appreciate the shade that it's offering this summer. And I have to say, when I've walked along here in these hot summer days, I'm so glad we have those trees, but oh, unfortunately we're gonna lose them. And. And the, I have to say that trees have been so positive for me on a spiritual level, on a physical level, on a mental, emotional level. And I want to give back, and I felt like, because I have so much gratitude for trees, I want to give back to them. So I joined this tree group uh, so that we can advocate all the benefits of the trees. And, uh, and so hopefully that some people will become more aware of what they can do and, their, and all the uh, benefits of the trees and how they can save the trees. And we can't say enough about the, how, about the loss of the, these trees um, in this downtown core of concrete. So please advocate for the trees. <laughs> Thank you, Sandy. I think you sum up very well how a lot of us feel about trees. Um, now we have a very special guest who's joined us tonight. I'd like to introduce our interviewer, Warren, and our Lorax. Thank you. Now I tell you, I want no resistance. Make sure you keep your social distance. <laughs> Mr. Lorak, what can you tell us about these trees? These trees? These trees? All my life I've been searching for trees such as these. They keep the air so cool and clean, give us oxygen and keep Poco Green. 
they calm my nerves, they soak up the water, they soften the sounds, and provide a nice home where wildlife abounds. And uh, who speaks for these trees? I speak for the trees, for the trees have no tongues, and I'm asking our city at the top of my lungs. I'm asking them, please, please, stop cutting these trees. Now there's no cause for alarm. They're cutting just one tree. <gasps> I'm the Lorax who speaks for the trees, which they seem to be chopping as fast as they please. Soon, all that will be left Beneath a bad smelling sky is a big parking lot, some buildings, and I. Now, you're making them mad, terribly mad. Now listen here, Dad. All you say is yap, 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 bad, 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 bad. For your information, you Lorax you, they're figuring on biggering and biggering and biggering and biggering. Unless. Unless what? Unless you care a whole awful lot, there will be no big trees in your city. There will not. So now we'll hear a little bit more music. Thank you. This next song is called My Roots Go Down. And it's uh, another version that we have uh, adapted for our tree. We call it the Deodore version. And we'd love you to help us. Uh, every time you hear the word down, and there are a lot of them, you can just kind of Push on down with your hands. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. I am a cedar in a parking lot. I am a cedar in a parking lot. I am a cedar in a parking lot. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. I am an ash tree rustling in the wind. I am an ash tree rustling in the wind. I am an ash tree rustling in the wind. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. I am a maple, tall and proud. I am a maple, tall and proud. I am a maple, tall and proud. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. My trunk stands tall in the wind. My trunk stands tall in the wind. My trunk stands tall in the wind. My roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. My branches reach 
for the sky. My branches reach for the sky. My branches reach for the sky. But my roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. Our roots go down, down into the earth. Our roots go down, down into the earth. Our roots go down, down into the earth. Our roots go down. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down, down into the earth. My roots go down. And our last song, I think, is a very optimistic one. I can change the world with my own two hands. I can change the world with my own two hands Make it a better place with my own two hands Make it a kinder place with my own two hands With my own, with my own two hands With my own two hands, gonna make it a safer place. With my own two hands, I'm gonna help the human race. With my own two hands, with my own, with our own two hands. With my own, with my own two hands. With my so much Bill and Kate and Mary Ike. Let's hear it for our musicians. I think you really get the emotional side of our connection to trees going here, so I really appreciate it. Um, I'd now like to ask Laura DuPont to come up and say a few words about trees and community. everybody for being here tonight. Wow, somebody brought a sign. That's awesome. Thank you. That's wonderful. Thank you, everybody. So good to see you here tonight. Thank you for caring about the trees. I know this community cares a lot about trees because the first time I ran in 2014, we knocked on almost 8,000 doors and I never talked about anything else but. <laughs> I mean, I asked people what mattered to them in the community, but they knew that my priorities were nature, preserving nature, and taking care of trees, and that I cared a lot about dealing with the climate crisis. Some people in the community say, well, we have lots of trees, and yes, we do, and that we've been planting some, but we aren't planting anywhere near as many as we are removing. And just like this beautiful deodar cedar, too many of the trees that are coming down in the city of Port Coquitlam are healthy, mature trees. 
These trees are really important because they have extra ability to sequester carbon, clean our air, reduce energy consumption, save us money, control erosion, prevent flooding, quiet our very noisy city, provide habitat for wildlife, provide us with food and medicine and a sense of calm. Who hasn't enjoyed sitting under the shade of a tree? A local businessman in this community told me how important the overall look and feel of the downtown part of Port Coquitlam is because of the trees. He said that the balance of green in this community brings a balance to our built environment, and it does. And with each tree that comes down, that erodes away gradually, and that's very concerning. Because at the end of the day, in 50 years, what do we want our community to look like? His concern also for the future with climate change is going to affect us. We are a city bordered by three rivers, and that puts us at increased level of risk. This one tree is a very important symbol of our resistance to the status quo and of our hope for the future. A future with more consideration for First Nations, for inequality, and for nature and the ecosystem services that allow our survival. So saving trees, I believe our collective future depends on it. I want to thank everyone for coming tonight. It is really good to see almost twice the turnout of what we expected. That's pretty awesome. And I want to thank Nancy Furness, who is literally our fearless leader, for coordinating this. For coordinating this and being a true community builder. So much respect for you, Nancy. And for Sebastian, for this great idea for defending me and this really great idea of having a wake for the tree. Thank you everyone, have a nice evening. Well, these are all very hard acts to follow here. Um, I would like to say a huge thank you to everybody who participated and contributed to tonight's event. Um, to all our speakers, to our musicians, to our entertainment, um, and to all of you for coming out and being here and showing that you care about trees. Uh, we have a group called Poco Heritage Trees, and we're a very committed and kind of quirky group, community group. Um, we've put on a lot of really engaging and interesting events over the past few years, but none of us can ever recall how we got the name Poco Heritage Trees. It's not a name that reflects who we are or what we do very well. So tonight um, we're saying good night, goodbye to the Diodar Cedar and we're also going to say goodbye to Poco Heritage Trees. <laughs> and we're going to make way for a brand new group that better reflects um, our, our spirit and who we are. So we're going to introduce you tonight to the Wondrous Tree Fellowship. <laughs> And I hope that you'll all join us, either participate with us or join us and volunteer with us. Um, our goal is to build a community of people who really care about the environment and who care about each other. So we are losing our beautiful Diodor or Himalayan cedar, but it's not the end of our fight for the trees, it's just the beginning. So thank you so much everyone for coming out tonight.